Now, good morning, everyone. Now, this part here, we will be doing flywheel and crank effort diagrams. Okay, flywheel and crank effort diagrams. So, first thing is, let us take a look at the application of flywheels. Now, these are some examples or some of the uh, photographs that I have taken from online. Then I've shown it here. This is, these are the examples of flywheels. Flywheels. And on the background, you can see this big pulley thing. Okay. The, that looks like a pulley. It is actually a flywheel. This is a big flywheel. Okay. So these are examples of flywheels. Okay. Modern day flywheels. Now, introduction to flywheels. Okay. Now, before that, okay, we look into what is a turning moment diagram. Now, turning moment diagram is basically a diagram with which on the y-axis you have the turning moment and the x-axis you have the angle turned by the crank. Okay, the angle turned by the crank. And in short, we usually call it as T theta diagrams. T theta diagrams. Okay. Now, the area of T theta diagrams is actually equals to energy or work done for anything that is rotating or moving in circular path. So, anything that rotates, we want to find the work done, usually is taken as the turning moment or the torque, the product of torque or turning moment or turning moment to the angle turn or the angular displacement okay so it is expressed in terms of newton meter radians or you can ignore the radians now the turning moment that ten turning moment diagrams also known as crank effort diagram and also known as the t theta diagram is the graphical representation of turning moment or crank effort for various positions of cranks now, it is plotted on Cartesian coordinates in which the turning moment is taken as the x ordinate of x axis and the crank angle as the y axis. Now, what I'm going to show you here is an example of a T theta diagram. Okay? So, Basically, this horizontal line here, this horizontal line that is on the T theta diagram, usually call it as the mean resisting top line. The mean resisting top line. And the area below the mean resisting top line is actually equivalent or equals to the energy required by the machine or the engine. The minimum energy required by an engine or by a machine. Area below this line here, this we can call it as the mean resisting top line. Now, but not all the case that the mean resisting top line is horizontal. Sometimes it can be in a wavy form or sometimes it can be in the form of a sinus curve or a cosinus curve. So this is your mean resisting top line. So here you can see it starts when the flywheel starts to rotate. When the flywheel starts to rotate, the torque starts to vary from its minimum to its maximum. So the torque, the torque might be okay at this point here, which is minimum. And at this point here, which is maximum, okay? It depends on okay, the turning moment and the power transmission. The energy saved in the flywheel, the energy actually stored in the flywheel. So that will cause the fluctuation of torque and the fluctuation of speed. Okay, so you have this. So it goes in a wavy curve like that. In a wave form. Okay, this is a regular wave form. 
it can be uh, some sort of like irregular waveform also okay so this is your t-mean you can denote it as t-mean and this is the uh, curve or the graph that is plotted based on points okay at which at various turning moment so if you were to join all these points you got curves like that okay you got a curve like that so any section or any area you see here okay this curve here is okay enclosing a certain amount of area here or a section here okay so this area here see my laser pointer the area here which is below the mean top line is an actually representing the energy that is okay the shortage of energy that is uh, as compared to the required amount of energy on this section here from let's say from this point to this point the energy required is actually equivalent to the area of this rectangle here see the movement of my laser pointer this area here below the mean top line this area here up to this point below the mean top line the area okay is actually equivalent to the energy required okay but the energy that is supplied by the flywheel okay based on this variation in top here is equivalent to the area under this curve here it's the area under this curve you see so the area under this curve you can say that that is this section here below the curve look at my laser pointer okay the area that is below this curve okay so that is the energy that is developed by the flywheel but the energy required is this area that is the area of the small section of the rectangle here below this point from this line to the from this point to this point this line here below any areas below that represents the energy that is required so energy required here as you see it is greater than the energy that has been developed by the flywheel so this shaded portion here you can shade this portion here actually is that is the amount of energy shortage that means the flywheel lack of this amount of energy or the machine has a shortage of energy by this amount because the required is this much the required energy requires this much but the energy developed is only this much below the curve so that means this is the amount that is okay need to be supplied by the flywheel actually okay so you can shade this portion here and also uh, uh, for this curve here you can also shape this portion here you can also shape this portion here this part and this part here okay so any section or any area that is taken below the mean top line is considered as negative in nature any area that is above the mean top line will be taken as positive so positive area negative area positive area negative area and negative area so negative means the energy developed is less than the energy required positive here means the energy that is developed is greater than the energy required so let's say for example you take this point from this point my laser pointer from this point to this point here any area below this line here is the required amount is the required amount any area here is the required amount but the developed the energy developed by the flywheel is this much including the area under the curve here so therefore when the energy that is developed is greater than the energy that is required so this part here is called as excess energy so you can consider as positive negative positive and negative so i just repeat once more 
any area or any section that is below the mean resisting top line will consider as negative because of shortage of energy. That is when the energy uh, developed is less than the energy required. Now, any area that is above is considered as positive because the energy that is developed by the flywheel is greater than the energy that is actually required by the machine. Okay, so you can shape both this section here, all this section here. Okay, so at least now you know, okay, what is negative, what is positive on a T theta, T theta diagram. Okay. So I draw both this line here. And then we have the T max on top and the T min at the bottom. Can you, you as you can see the energy is actually fluctuating from max to min min to max. Okay. So I note down points here A. That is when the horizontal line intersect with the y axis here. I put this as a point A. Okay, you can denote it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to you, or A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so I put that as point A. Then the next point here should be your point B. Look on the board. This should be point B. And this should be point C. Okay, and this should be point D. Okay, point D. Then point E. And your point F here. Okay, then you have, okay, another diagram showing you that that is the mean resisting top line. So when you have areas like that, so any area that is below the mean top line here, the area that is below the mean top line is energy required by the machine. Okay, maximum energy required by the machine. Okay, area under the T mean line. Okay, area under the curve, the wavy curve, is actually representing the energy supplied or the energy developed by the flywheel. So this, you can shade it. So as you can see, this part here, this part here, this part here, this part, and this part. Now I start to shade up the areas. Okay. These areas here, your B, C, D, and E, and F, okay? Then remember, anything that is below, mean resisting top line, is negative energy, positive energy, negative energy in the flywheel, positive energy in the flywheel, and negative energy in the flywheel. Now, since the work done is the product of turning moment and the angle turned, therefore, the areas of the turning moment diagram actually represents the work done per revolutions. Now, in actual practice, the engine is assumed to work against the mean resisting top line. So, area under the mean resisting top line, that's why it is equal to the energy required. Okay? So, now, turning moment is positive when the engine top is more than the mean resisting torque. Okay, that means the engine torque, the supplied torque, is greater than the mean resisting torque line. It's considered as a positive torque turning moment. And it is a negative turning moment when the engine torque is less than the mean resisting torque line. So therefore, you look at this A1 here, look at my pointer. A1 here is when the engine torque is greater than the mean resisting torque line here. So this shaded portion here, 
okay, you should say is the positive amount of energy. That means this energy, what happens to this excess energy? Actually, it will be stored in the flywheel. Now, what is a flywheel? Flywheel is actually acting as a reservoir, okay, as acting as a reservoir for energy storage, for energy storage. And of course, it is not a water tank, which you can see water inside of it. This is a flywheel. Now, when we talk in terms of energy, of course, we can't see. So, but how do we know that there is an excess? So when you see the speed of the flywheel increase, when the speed of the flywheel increase, that means there is an excess of kinetic energy. There is an excess of kinetic energy. That means there are excess energy being stored in the flywheel. So the flywheel accelerates when there is energy excess. Okay? It accelerates. So from that, you got to know that there are excess energy in the flywheel stored. Now, when the flywheel slow down, that means decelerate. That means that you got to know that actually the flywheel is releasing some of the energy that has been stored in it in terms of kinetic energy to run the remaining of the processes. Just like for a four-stroke engine, you have four different processes. You have suction stroke, you have compression stroke, you have combustion stroke, and you have the discharge stroke. Now, energy developed only during power stroke. During the suction, compression, and discharge, there will be no energy excess or there is no energy being developed. So what happens if there are no energy developed during such those other three processes? So now, what happens is the energy that is excess just now during the power stroke will be used to run okay, the suction, the compression, and the discharge. So basically, when you say that, okay, we got to know that Okay, the energy balance here, the energy balance here will be taken as total energy developed by the machine or by the engine, sorry, by the engine, total energy developed by the engine must be equal to the total energy required by a machine. The total energy developed by the engine, the engine and the machine engine should be the driver, machine should be the driven. Okay, so energy developed by the engine must be equal to the total energy required by the machine. That is actual practice. So therefore, we can say, okay, okay, theoretically, we can say this total area above the mean top line, above the mean top line, must actually be equal to the all the areas here that is below the mean top line. So that is energy balance. So that means the total energy developed must be equal to the total energy required. Okay, we come back to this. Okay, now, now you know when you have positive torque and when do you have negative torque now. Okay, torque on the crankshaft at any instant, that is T. T mean is the mean resisting top line. So now, according to Newton's second law, for anything that rotates or for anything that roll or moving in circular path, the agent of motion should be the turning moment, not the force. Okay, so the agent of motion is the top. So in order to know whether it accelerates or not, there must be a net top. Now, how to find the net torque? So, you have to take the T here minus the T mean. The T can be known as the torque that is developed by the engine. The T mean can be considered as the torque that is required by the machine. So, when you take T minus T mean, you've got T net here. Now, for Newton's second law for forces, you have F net 
equals to the product of mass and acceleration. For torque or for anything that is moving or rotating, you have T net equals to I alpha. This I represents the second moment of mass and alpha represents the, sec uh, the angular acceleration. Okay? So when T minus T mean is positive, that means the flywheel accelerates. When T minus T mean you have a negative, that means the flywheel decelerates. Okay? Hope you understand until where I have explained. Now, <clears throat> for this section, there are two important terms that we have to know. One is known as the coefficient of fluctuation of energy. The other one is known as the coefficient of fluctuation of speed. So we know that torque fluctuates from mean to max and then to minimum, then to mean, then to max, then to average or mean, then to minimum and so on. So the torque does fluctuate. So when the torque fluctuates, of course, the energy fluctuates as well because the speed also fluctuates. So now beta is a measure of this fluctuation and we call that as the coefficient fluctuation of energy beta and is defined as the greatest fluctuation in energy divided by work done per revolution so now first of all what is the greatest fluctuation of energy so you can say this is the greatest fluctuation of energy the subjective now it becomes beta times w Beta times W, the subject, now is actually equal to the greatest fluctuation in energy. So you have beta W is equal to the greatest fluctuation of energy itself, actually from this formula here, from this definition here. So what is greatest fluctuation in energy actually? So it is the maximum kinetic energy minus the minimum kinetic energy. So what is the kinetic energy formula for anything that is for... Uh, things or for uh, things or for machine parts which rotate. So you can take half I omega square. I repeat once more, I represents the second moment of mass. Omega refers to angular speed, which is in radians per second. So if you have RPM, then you have to take 2 pi n over 60. If you have RPS, you will have to take 2 pi n. Okay, the N represents the speed in revolutions per minute or revolutions per second. That is how you convert it to omega that is in radians per second. Okay, so this is actually known as the angular kinetic energy. This is not the kinetic energy which you have seen so far, which is half mv squared. But I think you have seen this formula before in your dynamics. So half mv squared is when the object is moving in straight line. This is when the object is rotating or moving in circular path. Okay, so as you manipulate this equation here, you come to this formula. Okay, you can come to this formula here where beta W is equal to I phi mean speed square. Now mean speed is the average speed phi. What is this symbol here? This symbol here is known as the coefficient fluctuation of speed. Beta is known as the coefficient fluctuation of energy. And this is known as the coefficient fluctuation of speed. What is coefficient fluctuation of speed? So it's defined as the variation in speed. What is variation in speed? So that is the maximum speed minus the minimum speed. And then divided by mean speed. What is mean speed? That is your maximum speed plus minimum speed over 2. That is between the max and the mean. Okay, so you get your phi. So when you refer back to the previous one, this is where you got your phi. Okay, because here you can see max plus mean divided by 2 is your mean speed. Max minus mean minimum over 2 is your, okay, max minus mean is actually your variation in speed. So this is variation in speed. This is mean speed. So how do you get phi? Then you have to know what is this five x five here actually stands for. So I've already explained just now. 
So what you need to do is you need to manipulate the formula or the equations that we have before that in order to get to this formula. So this formula, remember, please, and also this as well, okay? And the variation in speed, of course, okay? That's all for now, okay? I have tutorials here, so you can try it out. The tutorials, you can try it out, and I will show you on the later slide. So if you are interested or if you find that it is interesting, so please subscribe and put your comment on the comment section below. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you all next time. Okay, these are the questions that you have.